One of the most asked questions I get constantly, uh, repeatedly, uh, on the daily, really, through comments on Instagram, through YouTube, through my one-on-one text advice, which you can get at thefantasyfootballshow.com, by the way. Most asked question is... Smitty, if you like Brees Hall so much in 2023, why don't you love Javante Williams, Smitty? Every ACL injury is different. Every situation is different. Every player is younger, older. When did they suffer the injury? Is there a timeshare going on? We're going to break down why I believe you're looking at a top five running back coming off an ACL tear and why you're looking at a player that's going to be hard pressed to, to do a whole lot early on at least because he's starting likely starting the season on the PUP. We're breaking all that down and more of the Fantasy Football Show. It begins right now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Take a lap. Every ACL injury is different on the back of this model you can see the acl and the pcl now granted it's in the middle of the knee but the model allows you to see it on the back you've got the mcl the lcl the meniscus in in between the the padding on the knee typically when you tear your acl you have your knee going one way or the other and as you can see right here this is the mcl when the knee bends this way it stretches that mcl thus having a, a grade one or a grade two tear Usually you do not snap it in half, grade three. Same thing goes with the LCL. So if the knee goes this way, you can see the LCL stretching right there. That's what happened to Javante Williams. He tore his ACL and his LCL, not in half on the LCL. He tore his ACL in half. And Javante's got a much worse injury than Brees Hall, who had a clean ACL tear without any other peripheral damage. So right off the bat you've got a, a worse injury timelines are different and that can be a factor but both of them had enough time and have enough time to recover from a, a regular injury Javante's injury being more extensive makes it to where he probably needed a whole lot more time than what he's been given to recover whereas Brees Hall a shorter window of time than you would like but he's he's already looking way ahead of schedule <clears throat> So factors are the severity of the injury, much more severe. The situation, we don't know what his, his workload is going to be. Is Sean Payton going to bring in competition? He was facing competition his whole time in Denver up until this point. So like, we don't know what's going on. What's the update and progress for both these guys? He's ahead of schedule. Brees Hall's ahead of schedule. They're saying he'll be ready by camp. Not, oh, he'll be ready for week one. He'll be ready by camp. And my prediction is, and I predicted we would hear he's ahead of schedule. He's ahead of schedule. Smitty, we're hearing Brees Hall's ahead of schedule. This is ESPN. Brees Hall's ahead of schedule. Brees Hall, please report to the moon during camp. And I also predict that we're going to start hearing, it looks like he didn't even tear his ACL. That's the next phrase we're going to hear. Mark my words. He looks like he didn't even tear his ACL, Bob. Yeah, Jimmy looks as smooth as butter. That guy's a moon man, Steve. We will hear things like that being said. We aren't hearing said things from Javante's side. And maybe we do and we can recalibrate our thinking if we do you know get to that point problem is he's not looking at competition coming out of the nfl draft i mean they could draft a, a spears or somebody but i'm not worried because his job is his he's not relinquishing it for a portion of the season in 2023 whereas javante's looking like he's behind schedule recovering from two different knee injuries the lcl and the torn acl so he's got two things he's recovering from he's not ahead of schedule we don't think he's really really behind schedule but he feels more on the track of jk dobbins where it was like oh my god is he ready we don't know if he's ready they're gonna shove him out there i think he'll be behind where barkley was barkley was like on the borderline of maybe being ready for week one he was barely cutting he's barely running with pads they shoved barkley out onto the field and he had a horrible season barkley had over a thousand yards rushing before his acl tear then barkley tore his acl in 2020 and barkley had a horrible first year back suffering compensation injuries which oftentimes occur from an acl tear and barkley had a 593 rushing in 2021 now granted barkley came out like a monster in 2022 bounced back that was his year two from recovery and while some might say well why don't you expect the same kind of like rocky road for Brees hall coming into year one post-surgery because he's looking more ready and he'll be ready for camp and we'll be able to see it if he suffers a setback we'll adjust and adapt but he's so far ahead of where barkley was it's all about the recovery he's young enough too he is so young it's like it's like coming out of college with a torn acl almost in a, in a way because we've rarely ever seen a rookie running back tear their ACL that was on a, a trajectory of becoming maybe even the number one overall fantasy football running back that rookie season before the ACL tear occurred. We haven't really seen a guy at that level 
with his climbing path to, to the running back one spot or at least running back two, tear his ACL that first year, come in the second year ahead of schedule. It's an entirely different story than talking about Barkley's recovery or talking about JK's recovery or talking about Javante's recovery. The odds are, if everything stays the course, he will have more of an Adrian Peterson recovery than a Saquon Barkley or JK Dobbins recovery. And like I said, he'll probably be a better player overall in 2024 than in 2023, but he's so smart. His vision, his drive, his work ethic, his situation might end up making it look as though nothing is is wrong and like a person that breaks their right arm and they've got to use their left arm this guy might magically start honing in on other skills turning weaknesses into strengths and this guy might have more improved skills across the board and be a better player because of it because it happened at such a young age it's like he almost tore this in college remember Todd Gurley tore his ACL coming into the pros when a player tears their ACL really early on Jamal Lewis tore his ACL uh, in 2001 he had 1364 the year prior he had 1320 on the ground rushing the year after his ACL tear. Adrian Peterson had the 1298 on the ground the year prior to tearing his ACL. His first year back, he rushed for 2,097 yards. I'm not saying he's rushing for 2,000 yards, but I'm saying he's going to have top five running back numbers as a sophomore coming off an ACL tear, and this guy's probably starting the year on PUP. Draft him with confidence in round two. Round two, Smitty, you just said he's a top five running back. Use ADP to your advantage. There's a reason he's on the moon man list. The moon man, dropping loads in outer space. There's a reason Brees Hall's on this list, and Kenneth Walker for that matter. Both guys, Space Moses. Both guys that have top five, top one to five running back potential in 2023, 20, yet their ADP has them falling into the mid second to late second. I'm getting Brees Hall, I'm getting Walker in the middle of round two. I'm sometimes getting Brees Hall in the same spot or later. Sometimes 24 25 turn, I'm looking at Brees Hall as one of my 24 25 second, third round turn picks, and it's absolutely crazy. If you don't count, capitalize on that value you're missing an opportunity to completely annihilate your league if you take him in round one because you're like smitty talks about him as a top five running back i'm gonna take him in round one okay smitty you better be right on this that's not you're missing the point you're not you're not hearing me when i tell you you win a league with hall in round number two you're baking in a lot of risk you're baking in maybe a setback Brees hall should be in round two because that's where his ADP lives. Don't take him earlier because you're excited about him. That's bad management. That's an impatient kid. You're that kid that couldn't wait for Christmas in January and you're climbing under mom's bed in, in February, March, April, looking for all your gifts. You just had no self-control whatsoever. Have patience in your draft. Let Brees Hall fall to you. Brees Hall wins you leagues. Javante is going around eight, nine. And to be honest, if Charbonnet's there in eight, I'm taking Charbonnet over Javante. He might start the year on the PUP, but I will attack Javante in spots. I will take Javante in nine when I'm looking around. I don't like anybody else because in best ball, promo code Smitty at Underdog Fantasy, they'll match up to $100 in your first deposit. Go do these underdog drafts because um, he's fallen to round nine. And that's a good value because in best ball, you don't to determine when he's going to break out and have a, a good game back. They insert him for you. Optimal lineups get set for you. You don't do any lineup setting or waiver wire selecting. It's all done for you. So in best ball, it's easier to draft him in round eight or in really nine, round nine. This is a round two guy that wins you a league. He's on the moon men list for a reason. He's on the Mars men list for a reason. He's on a shuttle to Mars. Mars man. Yeah. Yeah, Brees Hall is a Mars man. This man right here. Loads dropping and spinning aimlessly in space. The Mars men are my top seven players to get based on value, based on winning your league at the cost of entry. Happy drafting. Know the difference between these two injuries and make the right choice on draft day. Now get out of here and get on over to the fantasyfootballshow.com. Year-round fantasy football rankings, bold predictions, my one-on-one -on -one text advice. Uh, I got into the business because there was no instant-based trade calculator in 2003. And I said, we need one of these bad boys. So I, I created it and I've been doing fantasy football problem solving ever since I work for you. Now get out of here. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty.